Hi, I'm Robert Stringer. I'm from the graduate student from the uh, University of California at Riverside. Hi, Robert. What brings you to CERN? Uh, I came here to uh, complete my PhD and uh, do my research on uh, LHC data, and I'm working on the CMS tracker DCS. So what kind of thing does this involve, your PhD studies and the actual work for CMS? For my PhD, I'm trying to uh, do an analysis on supersymmetry, which is uh, specifically the model is the uh, GMSB model, or GH-mediated supersymmetry breaking. And we're, uh, I'm specifically trying to look to prove or find the existence of the, uh, of the neutralino, which is one of the supersymmetric particles. And how does this relate to your work at CMS? Um, well, in uh, my, my work in, at CMS, all of our work at CMS, you have to have the detector uh, to be able to, to uh, do any type of analysis. And so uh, my analysis would use the, uh, I'm looking specifically for photons and missing energy, and uh, you can't compute things like missing energy without using the tracker. Okay, so what is your work on the tracker beam specifically? Uh, I work on the tracker detector control systems, or DCS, uh, which is the software that, that turns on the, the detector and makes sure it's operating properly and uh, also keeps it safe. And I heard that the tracker isn't actually going to be turned on straight away when the LHC beam starts. Can you explain why? Because uh, since it's the tracker, they, there's two parts of the tracker, the strip tracker and the pixel detector. Um, and these are silicon detectors, which are very sensitive uh, to the particles, pass, the charged particles passing through them. So in order to uh, make sure that they're safe, when the, the beam turns on, uh, we have to be off because if, if the beam is not stable or if the, until they get the beam aligned properly, there could be stray particles that could strike the, the detector, overloading some of the uh, electronics and, and causing permanent damage. So uh, that's one job also of the DCS is that we monitor the, the state of the beam and make sure that we don't turn on the power uh, unless uh, it's safe. So whilst we're waiting for beam and, and until uh, the tracker is turned on, what, what are you actually working on? What, what, are you, what are you and your group working on at the moment? Uh, you mean uh, physics or? Um, whilst we're waiting for beam. Oh, while we're waiting for beam, we're still adding features to the DCS. Uh, more analysis of the operating parameters, uh, more safety features or, or what we call also protection features. We make sure that, that the DCS will not allow you to turn the detector on in a state, a state that is not safe. And the uh, DCS, what's that? DCS is mm. Detector Control mm -hmm. System. Okay. Uh, Great. So there's uh, always, as uh, people start using the detector more and more as we get closer to beam during the commissioning, they decide more and more things that they would like to see, more and more analysis uh, information, and so they, they request with us more features, uh, and then we implement them in, uh, and update the software. So when uh, data starts coming, how will you be using that for your PhD studies? Well, everybody will have to use it because if you want to turn on the detector, you have to have the DCS working. And how, how will you use the data uh, 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 that CMS finds for okay. your PhD studies? Uh, well, I'm going to be looking specifically for, for two photons and some missing energy. So what that means is as the, the neutralino decays, it'll decay into a photon and a, and a gravitino. The gravitino is completely undetectable. It will pass right through, through the detector and, and through the earth and through anything else and nothing can stop it because it has a very low interaction cross-section. So uh, we won't be able to see uh, the gravitino directly. So the way we determine this is by we look for a photon, which is the other byproduct of the neutralino decay, and then we look for energy that went away that we can't account for, and that's the gravitino. So if we see uh, the right amount of photons and, the, and a, an appropriate amount of missing energy, then we can conclude that, that the, the neutralino existed and, and then decayed as we thought. So is this study um, on the back of your BSc in physics? Can you just tell me a little bit more about the back, your academic background to have come to this, this place in your, in your academic career? Well, as, a, as an undergraduate, I, I did uh, 
I did a, a dual major of physics and mathematics, and then uh, I worked with a nuclear physics group at Cal State Los Angeles. And uh, so that's when I first had started working with collider data. Uh, I was actually working with data from a, a collider in Germany, a smaller one. And, uh, and when I read about the, the LHC being built, I thought that's where I want to be. So you spoke to your professor and he made it possible to come here? Is, how did it happen? Well, uh, I, when I graduated from Cal State LA, I looked for, I applied to universities who worked at the LHC on various experiments. And so I decided to go to, uh, to University of California, Riverside, and work on CMS. And so how long have you been working on CMS? How long have you been at CERN? Uh, I've been I, uh, been working at CMS actually since 2005. So the first two years I was doing work from, from Riverside, and then in 2007 I moved out here permanently. And how do you find CERN in general? I, I like it. It's a very uh, interesting atmosphere. Uh, it's fun to be out here. It's fun to work on, on big pieces of uh, equipment and be able to go down to the cavern and see the actual experiment up close. And how does it compare to being back home in Los well, just outside of Los Angeles? Well, Los Angeles is nice. It's warmer, uh, but uh, I, I like it out here because this is it's less of a so much of a city environment compared to Los Angeles. There's a lot more things to do outdoors. Uh, and uh, it's been, been a really a great experience. So um, what would your advice be to other students wishing to come to, to CERN? I think if, uh, if you want to do physics at CERN, CERN is where you should be. So I, I would think you should try to make uh, arrangements to, to come out here. Uh, it's, it's been really great. Uh, I brought my family with me and they love it out here as well. So even after uh, I graduate, I'm hoping to, to stay out here a while. Robert, thank you very much for sharing your experiences. You're welcome.